Welcome to this video on moons and I want to have a look at the differences between regular and irregular moons. Now there's two different types of moons we have in the solar system. You've got regular moons and irregular moons and I want to just clarify the differences between the two, which ones are which. But before we go and have a look at the differences between a regular moon and an irregular one, let's just clarify again what a moon actually is. So a moon is an object or a minor planet, smaller object orbiting a larger planet, or even it could be a larger minor planet really, and it has to be in orbit around that larger object. And it's not going to be a planet because a planet is going to be orbiting the star. So this is a smaller object orbiting something like a planet, and that is what we will classify as a moon. So for example, our moon is a moon, it's orbiting the Earth. That's a good example. So regular moons are thought to form around the planet. Now, because they form around the planet, their orbits are in the same direction as the planet rotates. So as an example, we've got Titan here, which is a moon around Saturn. So that is classified as a regular moon and it's orbiting in the same direction that the planet rotates. This is fairly typical of a regular moon. Now, another key feature of a regular moon is that they are orbiting in the same plane as the planet's equatorial plane. So if a planet's rotating and you think about where the equator is, then the moons are going to be orbiting in the same plane. So a good example of that is Jupiter's Galilean moon. So the four Galilean moons are regular moons and they are orbiting approximately in the same orbital plane as the equatorial plane. It's not Exact, there is slight inclinations, but they're very close to it. Some of Saturn's moons that are regular, so you've got Titan, Dione, Enceladus, Rhea, these are all regular moons. These are orbiting in the same direction in that same equatorial plane as the planet. Our moon is a good example of one as well. So the Earth's rotation and the orbit of the moon are somewhat correlated. So as we're rotating in this direction, the moon goes in the same direction as well. There's some inclination there again, but it's not massively excessive. And it's because they, they co-formed, the moon and the Earth formed together, so they're, they're linked in that sense. Now, irregular moons are quite the opposite. So probably the best example of an irregular moon in our solar system is Triton. So Triton is the largest irregular moon in the system. It's also a moon of Neptune. Now, if you have a look at the inner moons here, they're all orbiting in a, in a common direction. They're also orbiting in the same direction that the planet is rotating. And then you have Triton. Now, Triton's actually orbiting in the opposite direction. So we would call that having a retrograde orbit. So regular moons have a prograde orbit and your irregular moons can quite often have a retrograde orbit, which means they're orbiting in, in the opposite direction. And Triton is the largest irregular moon we have, which is on this particular retrograde orbit. But it's not just orbiting in the opposite direction. It has a very high inclination angle. So if you look at the equatorial plane of Neptune, the way it's rotating and, and where its equator is, and then you have a look at the orbital plane of Triton, it's actually inclined by 157 degrees. So it's, it's on a very inclined orbit compared to a regular moon. And actually, irregular moons can have quite a range of inclinations. They can be anywhere, really, around the planet. They can be orientated, however, really. They're not restricted to any direction. You typically find that irregular moons also have very large eccentricities. And when we talk about eccentricities, we mean how elliptical its, its orbit is around the planet. So the white circle there, the arrow, represents a regular moon, and they normally have fairly circular orbits. They're not that elliptical because they formed with the planet. There's no reason for them to be very elliptical unless they've had some kind of interaction post-formation. But the irregular moons, they will quite often have very elliptical orbits. And just giving you an example here with Triton, which is over exaggerated, but it shows that it's very elliptical. And this is another feature of these irregular moons. 
Now, a lot of the outer planets like Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, they've all got these retrograde groups or these irregular moon groups. And you can see the distinction between the prograde and the retrograde group here with Saturn. But one of the key things to note, as well as having a different plane of orbit, they're orbiting in different directions, the retrograde groups are also located further out from the planet. Now, interestingly, retrograde moons are able to exist further away from their planet and still remain stable than the prograde ones. So you typically find these retrograde groups are located further out. Jupiter has pretty much exactly the same. On the inner moons, you've got the Galilean moons there, then you've got a prograde group, and then you've got this retrograde group, which is located much further out. And again, they can exist on stable orbits much further away from the planet than the prograde ones, uh, which is an interesting thing about these irregular moons. But it's worth noting with, with Jupiter, this green orbit we have is actually a prograde moon within the retrograde group. Now I'll just leave that with you to think about really, but there's a possibility there there's going to be um, quite a significant collision at some point in the future because you've got moons orbiting in different directions in the same area. So there's going to be a significant collision there at some point in the future. But where do those key differences come from? Well, unlike the regular moons that are thought to form with the planet and therefore share common rotations, common orbits, directions. Irregular moons are thought to be captured smaller objects that have got too close. Now, because they are captured and it depends on their trajectory, so they can come in from any direction reasonably. And if they get too close, they can be gravitationally captured by the planet. And the trajectory to the planet will denote its final orbit. So it's quite possible it will approach on the opposite side and it ends up going on a retrograde orbit or it approaches from above and actually it can be on a very inclined orbit. It also explains why they have very eccentric orbits. So the key difference between these two types of moons is how they end up in their final position. One form of the planet and one actually will be captured if it got too close. So that is what gives us are key differences in the orbit. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoy, then you can check out some more of the videos.